I saw a need, because I was on a Good Morning America episode uh, recently, two episodes, about women and the Me Too movement in the workplace. And, mm -hmm. and I do a lot of coaching. I do a lot of corporate trainings. And I started to think, like, what if I brought some of my corporate training materials and information and created a workshop specifically for women so that they can be empowered to communicate with impact, with influence, with power, with owning their values. Like I feel like knowing your value, owning your value, speaking your value, and then earning your value, you know, earn what you are worth. Because I feel like that's a huge conversation out there now. You know, you've got all these people that are talking about pay equity, talking about women in leadership positions, women in politics, all of that. And, and I'm really happy for it. I'm so happy that finally there's a conversation about we need more women in the, on the front lines. And at the same time, I want to make sure that every woman that is prepared to be in the front line is prepared to maximize their potential, which is what my workshop is called. You know, you've got potential. How do you maximize it in the way that you communicate, in the way that you speak, the way that you have an impact? And that's what this two-day workshop is going to be about in New York City. That's beautiful. And there is such a need. Yes. Having come from the corporate world where I was for over 15 years in human resources, I, I've seen a lot of women who come in and have brilliant minds, mm. and very strong technical skills, right. and yet they're not communicating their value. Yes. And it starts with the interview. Just when they're interviewing to get the job, they're not selling them or talking themselves up and all the great things they're doing yes. tend to, they tend to um on average talk you know be more humble about their accomplishments yeah, yeah. And it's how are we going to know how great you are unless you're talking about i know i see that so much when i do uh presentations when i do trainings one of the first questions that come up when i have one-on-one -on -one coaching one of the first questions that or statements that come up is like well i don't want to seem braggy I don't mm -hmm. want to be bragging. And I was like, okay, I get it. I get it. Nobody wants to be a used car salesman. Right. I totally get it. I hate being sold to. I hate when people brag to me. However, there is a fine line between bragging and sharing your value. You know, because if you do not share your value, no one else is going to do it for you. And if you don't share your value, you are actually doing a disservice to those who you're talking to because you know, they're running around thinking that they want their revenue to grow. They want their sales to grow. They want their leaders to lead. And if you're sitting on the power that you have to do that without sharing it, you're doing them a disservice. What are they going to do? They're not going to get ahead because you're not sharing how great you can be at doing what it is that they need. And I feel like, so I feel like women will be the first person to raise their hand to say, I like helping people, you know, if he's like, oh yeah, I like helping people. Yes, 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 that's me. But if you say, I, I want to tell people what I do in a very powerful, straightforward way, the hand's not gonna go up as high, you know, because, it's, but to me, it's the same thing. You know, to telling people what you do and what you're great at is a way of helping them figure out how to utilize your skills and how to better their lives. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I see that as well, is that when women do start to speak up and start to get more involved in the conversation, then they, their leaders and their managers then tap them to take on lead roles. Yes. But until they speak up a little more with confidence, mm -hmm. um, that their, their managers aren't going to know that they're interested or capable of actually stepping into a leadership role, a technical yeah. lead or a, or a management role. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, and, and then it's a cycle, right? right. So the more, right. the more you downplay yourself, the less people know about you and right. the less opportunities you, that get offered to you. And then, we, then, then you start the complaint cycle. You know, it's like, oh, why didn't yeah. I get this? Or why didn't they get this? Or why are women this? Or why are women that? And granted, I am the first to know that there is systemic things in place that yes. you definitely definitely hinder women's advancement and there are in biases like obvious biases unconscious biases all of those things get into play and i believe that we can start to chip away at those things 
by finding ways to communicate our greatness in ways that are not um, that are not being utilized now. And right. I feel like, especially for women, it's like it's not you don't necessarily want to go to the aggressive side. And that's what I feel like when people are talking about power and women and leadership. It's like we have this model of this male model of leadership, and it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be that way. No, like, like there's the assertive female that can be very powerful, very strong, and still get what they want and still be feminine and mm-hmm. still be res- respected. And, I, and that's what I want to pull out. I mean, everybody is so different. You know, so the first day of the workshop is really going to be about identifying the value that you bring to the world. You uh. know, like what are the things that you are great at? How are you going to implement the impact? What are the things from your childhood that makes you so great at them? You know, it's like really dig in. How are you being seen? It's like, so the people will be doing peer evaluations. Like, how are you being seen? How are you showing up? And that is so important because we we have this image of ourselves, but what do other people see when they see us? And that's a really important part. So to really hone in on what our message is, what our value is, what our worth is. And then we're going to, the, the second day, we're going to talk about how we can then show all of this, you know, then we're going to deal with the body language. We're going to deal with the vocal tone. We're also going to deal with the content. How do you organize presentations or conversations or even interviews so that the most impactful words and the most impactful images come through so people understand what it is that you have to say and will not talk over you. You know, it's like mm-hmm. some of those things. It's like I did a survey recently before a webinar that I was uh, was teaching on communication skills, and I was floored because these were high level women in pharmaceuticals, and some of the things that they still held on to were heartbreaking to me. You know, things like I still get talked over by men and women. Right. I, um, <laughs> I ask questions at a meeting. I'm afraid to give my opinion to senior leaders because I'm afraid that I won't be taken seriously. Um, All of these things over and over, I don't know how, you know, I I don't know how to speak with confidence. I feel really nervous in front of large groups. Like these are the things that I just want to, one group, one person at a time, eliminate. Because you know, I've been, like I, I told you, I've been there, I've been that wallflower, I've been that shy person and I am so over it. I am so devoted to helping women get through that, helping all people. And, and I'm specifying in women. I don't think that I, it doesn't mean that I know, I don't think men are worthy of this workshop or anything like that. But I feel like we learn sometimes much better as a group and we learn from each other. And that's why this particular workshop is focused towards women. But I value everyone's opinion and everyone's need mm-hmm. to maximize their speak potential. Absolutely. Oh, what a valuable course. Yeah. That's beautiful. I think I love that you're starting from um, the in the inner work and identifying the value, maybe the limiting beliefs you might yes. have. Oh, yes. And that's the other thing. It's like mind shift is like because I'm, you know, I'm really big on neuro linguistic programming and mind shift. And we have a guest speaker coming who is a mind mindset and uh, meditation expert. You know, she actually does research. She used to be, a, she's got a fabulous story. She did a TEDx talk recently, which I helped her with. And I was so fascinated and so impressed by her that I'm bringing her in to work on mindfulness and work on how to shift that mindset right there in the workshop so that you get all of these techniques. You get to hear her journey from being a, a Wall Street executive to having a really horrific experience and turning her entire life around to become a researcher in brain science and come up with um, some of the newest insights on the, how the brain works on stress. So yeah, wow. Aman is going to be there. So it'll be really- What is your name? Her name is Aman. Don't ask me to pronounce her <laughs> last name, Hausman, but it's on, it's on the, uh, the, if you go to the website, you'll see all Wonderful. That. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could be there for this for this two day event. Yes, you have. Sounds amazing. Yes. Yeah. So you must have learned an awful lot about uh, body language uh, through your summit, and I can't wait for all the people listening to listen to that. And I can't wait because I didn't listen to all of them yet either, but I want to listen to it as well. And um, 
some of the things that you must have learned or some of the questions that in HR, what are some of the things that have come up for you? Wow, there's, there's so much. I, um, let me share something though from a personal experience because that's what's coming to mind right now. And mm -hmm. it's what I find is the way you show up in one place is the way you show up in a lot of places in your, you know, yeah, in all areas of your life. You heard it, uh, first time I heard it was T. Harbecker said, how you do anything is how you do everything. I love that quote. That's beautiful. Yeah. So um, I was recently chatting with a male friend of mine, um, great guy, such a nice person. And I asked him for some feedback and he said, you know, Judy, you are so good at asking me about me and, and supporting me and caring about me, but you don't share a lot about yourself. I don't know enough about you. Amazing. And I was surprised because I, I think of my, I think of myself as a very open person, but I realize I'm very open with my friends and my family. And yet with people that are newer, newer friends or newer acquaintances or larger group in larger groups, I don't share that much about myself and the right. people don't get to know me and I'm not giving them the chance to know me and, and to see my gifts that I have I to offer. I love that. I love that because it does translate into everything. Like in the workplace, I have I have an, uh, a client, I have a one-on-one -on -one client that I'm working with and that is her issue because she goes into the workplace and she has a difficulty sharing who she is. And consequently, she feels like she's on the outside and she knows that that's an issue, but like bursting through it is really challenging. So like on a personal, you're so gift, you're so lucky and fortunate that somebody brought that out so that we I know. think about it. And, and, and so that's one of the things that we definitely want to tackle in this workshop is how to bridge, even if they don't ask you the questions, how do you solicit or how do you, dem, uh, what is that word? <laughs> how do you offer, offer. Your, um, your value, o offer mm -hmm. information about yourself that you think is valuable, even if the other person seems like they're not gonna ask that question, right. which is very often. I mean, we're a very self-centered society these days. Have you ever heard of the um, acronym H-A-P-O-V? No. What is so that? it was about 12 years ago, I was in a job and one of my colleagues, a more senior colleague of mine said to me, H-A-P-O-V, that's how I think of you, Judy. I wanna see more H-A-P-O-V. I'm like, what? She said, have a point of view. Ooh. And, she, and I said, that. I thought I'm always telling my, and she says, no, I don't really know what you're, mm -hmm. what you think about things. And you're not, you don't, you don't speak up. You don't express you're sort of neutral in the back there. And I went, Oh my goodness. Yes. 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 Right. Yes. And that's exactly, exactly, exactly what I want to do in this two day workshop right. is to give people permission because it's not that they don't have a point of view, it's right. like they all have a point of view, but to give people permission to express that point of view powerfully and consistently and assertively. It doesn't mean that you have to dominate a conversation. No. It doesn't mean that you have to be a male type leader. It doesn't mean that you have to be aggressive. All it means that you can assert yourself in situations. And like the first day, like I said, we're going to be pulling out all of the great stuff that you have inside. The second day, we're going to be putting it on the outside. Like, how do you stand? How do you sound? How do you use your voice? How do you use your gestures? How do you create the content that gives you that point of view? Because like, that's the other thing that we do is we talk around in circles sometimes and we don't get to the point. It's like, so what are you really wanting to say? And I have formulas and I have... Um, outlines and I have all of these things to help you get to the meat of what it is that you need to say, say it and say it in a way that people will hear it. I love that. Yeah. I love it. Oh, I wish I lived closer to New York. Oh, come visit us. Well, I will. August is just where you want to be in August. <laughs> <laughs> What's the temperature today? <laughs> 90? Right, right. Oh my goodness. Oh, thank you so much, Judy. It's been a pleasure again. Thank you. Speaking thank you. And I, and I, I just wish you so much luck and, and uh, abundance. And with this program, I think anyone who attends is going to have so much value that they get out of yes. it. Yes, yes, they will. And I'm really looking forward to it. And um, anybody who's listening, please reach out if you're interested in being part of this program. Maximize your speak potential. You can 
access the information from my website, robinhatcher.com, R-O-B-Y-N-H-A-T-C-H-E-R. And if you want to learn more about body language, go to bodylanguagesecretsrevealed.com. Yes. And, <laughs> and I will answer any questions that you have if you want to just chat with us. So it's my pleasure. And I hope to see you someday in the flesh. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Good luck in your amazing event. Thank you.